Hi, everybody. I thought you might enjoy a little missionary story. Now, just so you know, it's going to come in several parts, so you don't get it all today. So pay attention and keep checking back. So let's get ready here. I'm going to name an activity, and if it's something you've done today, touch your ear. Um, eat breakfast. Uh, get dressed. Oh, my ear, not my head. How about watch TV? How about go to school? Oh, that's right, no school. Well, that's why you might be bored. But we're going to talk about how people in different countries can learn different ways. You normally go to school in a building, or some of you may go to school at home. On a computer right now, most of you may be doing online classes. But here's just some different pictures of different ways kids can learn. Some learn inside, some learn outside. Some are at home, away, all different ways. Some kids can't even go to school. Some kids have to stay home and learn how to plant seeds and grow them and harvest them. And I'm sure that's really hard work. But that's the way their life is. <clears throat> Even to the point that um, different ways that people do things, when we have supper, we all sit down together at a table, everything, have our food there and our plates and all that, and somebody sets the table and somebody clears the table. In some countries, they don't do that. And I mean they really don't do that, like, they're not inside, there's no table, there's no chairs, no dishes, no silverware. They all sit around, the whole village gets together, not even just one family. They sit on the ground and they have a big pot in the middle and they just eat out of it with their hands and go back for more. Not many dishes to do, but not the way we're used to. Well, even though people do things very differently in many different countries, there are some common things that we all have. Let's think about that. You think really hard. Think of one in your head and tell somebody that's next to you. And then I'll give you one. Think, how about we all need air? And we all need food. How about water? The main thing that everybody needs is to hear what Jesus did for them and accept him as their savior. That's why missionaries go to other countries, or some even are, people are missionaries here. What is a missionary? Well, there are different kinds of missionaries. Some pack, take their family, pack up their whole house, and they move to a different place in the United States or even a different faraway country, and some of them even far out villages that we would never even know about, and they live there, and their job is to reach these people and tell them about Jesus and to get a church started if possible. Some missionaries take their family, and they may move to another country or somewhere, and get a job in a factory or maybe teaching, and through that they get to know people, and then they're able to share the gospel with them. And there are missionaries like right here, like watching this video. You can be a missionary. You can tell others about Jesus. That's what it really is, telling others what Jesus did for us. So today we're going to hear a story that is a true story. So you know that it happened a long time ago, but it is a true story. And I have to tell you, I'm not going to give it all to you at once. Just remember that. So you have to keep checking back. So we're going to talk about a lady named Miss Frances. She was a missionary teacher. And she was in the, Africa in the country of Nigeria. And she went to work with a tribe called the Tangle Tribe. Now we're going to hear how Miss Frances was used to help a girl named Wamdi learn about Jesus. And you might even hear this and think, wow. I think I want to be a missionary someday. We'll have to see what God has for you. So let's get started. I'll show you our first picture. 
Here's Wamdi. She was straightening her dress, trying to look nice, and she was looking in the room. She was kind of scared. She was looking in, wondering if she should go in this schoolroom. She finally decided she was brave enough. She was going to go in to this new world of pencils and books and paper. But it was a world of mystery and fear for her because inside that room, there was a bature. That's a white person. And those white people, she was taught, could swallow up her spirit. That's what she was told. And many people in Wambi's village believed that. They believed that the bad things that happened when people got sick or bad things would happen just by going to the missionary school because of the bature, the white people. If you talk to them, you might get sick. You might, family might get sick. You don't, they didn't know. They just believed that these, this God, a false God, would do bad things to them. But Wamdi was curious, so curious that she was willing to brave the bature and find out for herself what the world was like inside that schoolroom. Her eyes were glowing with excitement, and she moved in just to the back and thought, I'll just stand here and listen. But guess what? The teacher saw her and said, come on in. So very slowly and carefully, she went in and sat down. Hello, Miss Francis said kindly. You may come in if you want. So Wamdi walked in, and Miss Francis showed her where she could sit down. Wamdi picked up the pencil awkwardly. She'd never held one before. And she thought about the bad things she heard could happen to her if she talked to this missionary. Well, Wamdi shivered at the thought, but she stayed anyway. Now, Wamdi, Miss Francis said, this is how you write the first letter of the alphabet in your language. So Miss Francis helped her hold the pencil correctly and guided her fingers. Wamdi looked at her hand and felt Miss Francis's soft hand covering it and how gentle she was. Forgetting how afraid and shy Wamdi was, she smiled at Miss Francis. Miss Francis smiled back. Before Wamdi left, Miss Francis invited her to come back in the next day. So, Will Wamdi go back to see Miss Francis again and go to school? You'll have to come back to see.